And this was when the backboard meta started to become a thing. But yeah. No air roll until the final moment. If they got that goal there, that would have been so good. Look, Cole and Stumpy. Right, it's time for another walk down memory lane. We're here in season two in the grand finals. Mocker Aces versus Flipside Tactics. So we'll, we'll be looking out for the same kind of stuff that we looked out for before. Um, as you can see here. <laughs> there we go, Marky versus Pashi. Look, finable carpet. Commentate the season one final, but he's here on the desk this time. It did get pretty loud at this point. We, we got the, the, the little um, little beta things. What are they called? They're called... I bought some of these. I think they're called boomsticks or something. Um, but I was sat like around here with Wavepunk next to me, right near near the front with Doomsy, and I was sat next to Wavepunk. Um, so I don't know if we'll be able to see me from above here. That looks like Cole right there with that hairline. <laughs> Maybe that's Cole. I don't know. Um, let's see if we can get get ahead. Who casted the finalist one? Was it Leaf and Lawler, wasn't it? Is it Market Aces or is it Flipside Tactics? We're going to find out right now. Let's go down to the commentator for the RLCS. Yep. Leaf and Lawler. Sorry for uh, skipping through the talking. Look at the graphics, though. Look at how, like, they were pretty good for their time, but still, like, it's changed so much. So we see Violent Panda here, part of the Dynasty team in the future. Uh... Devo went on to win the next event. Um, Pashi was a bit of a legend of the scene. He now streams a lot in German. If anyone, any of my viewers are German and they want to see a top German Rocket League streamer, Pashi does stream in German. And then uh, Greasy came over to replace Mike Rules and Flipside, who we saw in the last final. Um, and Cooks here and Marky here. And Demon Time trying to get their first World Championship victory. So the gameplay already looks better than and from the first ever goal, event like they can hit it off the wall here. guys they can hit it off the wall now they still have the wows every aerial hit in the game yeah look they can actually go off the walls now they couldn't really do that in season one whereas now the players are able to to jump off the wall so we can see the evolution of mechanics throughout this history journey but I don't think they're going to leave it up to chances. Also, quick up aerials are now a thing. Players are like lean back aerialing. Where in the last one, they sort of just double jumped and then flew upwards. Whereas the speed, look, that technique there. Still a little bit of a lack of air roll. Marky now trying to do the exact same as he moves down towards the other end. Breezy with a backboard pass. Cook's there to receive it. Love yeah, so there's going to be a lot of backboard hits around this time. A minute and a half almost approaching. Yeah, you can see just the, the technique off the wall and the aerial ability has improved so much just from season one. Uh, people are actually sitting on the wall and hitting the ball from the wall, which is huge. Look at the aerial speed and technique. It's much better. Um, still, the car design is very simple. We had animated decals now. You see the 20XX being used. Is it 20XX? No. Slipstream was the original popular one, which Devo's using. Um, is that like an audio glitch there? You hear like a car revving. But um, yeah, you can see the car design still pretty simple. Um, what I said last time about the colored items, you're not allowed to use colored items on land build. So like Devo has just standard sunbursts. So you are very limited by your car designs because at this time colored items are starting to become popular. So this is where Cristiano's became quite popular because pros would use Cristiano's on land as well. With a clutch save. We talk about that creativity coming out from flip side. You see it there. Greasy, even though he has the ability to make an extra touch, what does he do? He actually just lets it settle down in his car. Marky swoops in, plays it upfield, and then the follow up, just one after another. It's so difficult to read. Marky with a pass off the back on a shot from Greasy. Will go All right, so this is the first goal we see here. And again, this was when the backboard meta started to become a thing. Just put the ball at the backboard. Players were getting better at reading off the, uh, off the wall where they're on the wall themselves. But they still couldn't read it from the ground underneath the back wall touches. Not very well anyway. So people would tend to not go and just sit in there and try and predict the shot. But if you ping it at the backboard hard enough around this time, you can get a lot of value. So this is where people start hitting the ball really hard and pinging it really hard towards the opponent's back wall. 
and just sitting nice and deep. You see here, Devo just banging that wall at the back wall. You see Greasy messes up the touch. Again, Marky messes up the touch. So this was the meta back then, was just bang it at your opponent's back wall and get value. Again, Devo just banging it at the back wall. And next season, we'll see this become the winning team strategy. At this time, Flipside were a little bit more uh, about passing to each other and, and working around each other a, a, a tad more. Um, but still utilize that backboard bang strategy. So then Northern Gaming next season that you'll see that really come into fruition. Marky almost had a shot on net there. Trying to extend their lead. Cooks will keep the pressure, allow his teammates to boost up. Mocket with a chance to break up for a counterattack, getting stuck in their own end again. They really need to release some of this pressure. Maybe take a hint from Panda. Good stuff from Marky. Puts it in front of the net. Devo beats him too. I'm just trying changing the quality pressure. settings. Devo to break out. And this is the highest Easy. quality it gets. No, he misses the angle. That's a good. But yeah, you see again the backboard usage usage there. Yeah, I think this is the, the highest quality it will get. Even the commentary, like, people have got so much better at commentary. Like, I know this is Lawler, who's no longer in RLCS, but, like, the quality of commentary, the quality of the players on camera, quality of production, the visuals, you know, we've still got Mobile One. <laughs> they, they still hang about. But, like, even just little things like the, the wow, every aerial touch. Like, how annoying would that be now if in RLCS you had a little wow every, uh, every touch? Yeah, a lot of just really standard whiffs back then. So when we watched the last one, we kind of looked at the ability and we went, what kind of rank do you reckon these guys are? I reckon this is just one rank higher. Like last time we said it was around Champ 3 GC1. I would say this looks to me a bit more like, you know, GC1 solidly, maybe GC2. But like, it's really hard to say because, you know, they, they haven't got to be able to read the opponent's mechanics and stuff, right? And so much of it was their synergy and strategy. And this is competitive threes versus like rank threes. It's always had a different style. Like rank threes has always been chaotic compared to high level threes, which is a bit more structured. But fair play. What I'm going to do now, now we've kind of seen the standard of gameplay of that first game. I'm going to skip through all the highlights along the timeline and have a look at those moments. But yeah, this was famous. Like Cook's focus face was quite famous. People were wondering what, what he was on. <laughs> But I think he was just very caffeinated and very, very tuned in. Yeah. Also, this, I think, is the tallest team in Rocket League history. With Devo, Pashi, Violent Panda. So Devo's like six foot six. Pashi, six foot six. Maybe one of them six foot seven, Devo. Uh, and then Violent Panda's like six two, six three. I might be under with some of those, but like, yeah, this this is the tallest Rocket League team in history, as far as I know. Right, so we've got a little peek here. That's... Still not some mentality you want to have. Let's I have mean, a little look at this peak. Going hard right away, but Flipside has that hand. Up. Well, last time what we saw here? Flipside do this, they weren't able to close it out, but they're looking strong right now. Let's see what they can do. We will find the thing is, now, these peaks might be nothing. It it's just you go back and look two. at them. Go back and check them out. Potentially two best of seven Devo. Flipside. Oh, the first one. that's just... One point the at the time, that was just classic Rocket League. Look, boom. Yeah, can't get that one. Boom, can't get that one. Boom, can't get that one. Win the first like, it just bang it at the backboard over and over again. And, like, this works down in champ and everything. If you can just boom at the backboard and read it, you'll, you'll, you'll win a lot of games. Fast recoveries and so on. Let's have a look here. I don't even know. Where fl when did flip resets come out? Were flip re resets come out this time? I wonder. I'm not currently live. I didn't live stream today, so I haven't got chat to help me out, but... Again, you see backboard utilized every single time. Boom. Yeah, you see the recovery speed is pretty impressive at this stage. Like, this is where the movement speed was starting to come better. Players were starting to, like, recognize recovery as being a big part of their commitment. And it meant that overcommitment wasn't as common by the top teams. Like, stuff like this. This is the kind of stuff that you can still take into the game these days, right? Like, just taking your time to line up your shooting. Yes, if you go early, your opponents aren't as ready. But, like, 
Trying to find an opportunity with Markey. The, the kind of structure they had and the, the tempo they had is something that a lot of new players could learn from. Because as long as pro Rocket League players have been about, they've always been able to take their time and and like change up their pacing which is so key to just every form of high level rocket league even when mechanics start to come in um and it's always something you notice in the best teams in the world is they have very good changing of pace which makes them hard to read oh he was class wasn't he look at diva he was class back then he could do stuff no other player could do like that that's really simple these days but like back then that 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 was unbelievable right, let's have a look at this moment so at this point 2-1 flip side oh that's a clanger this is what flip side did really well is they passed to each other right so they were sort of like the early infield passes where this was the kind of like the meta of do you infield pass or do you backboard hit it and Flipside would utilize both, which is where their success came from. And then when you get onto the Dignitas slash uh, Gale Force dynasty, they really did utilize backboard plays, infield passing plays, tried to mix up based off of the defense. At this stage, though, if you were good enough, you could just read Flipside and intercept a lot of their things, but people just weren't good enough to read differences in pacing and differences in touches at this time. So this was a bracket reset. Okay. Flipside win the first one. So we got they got to win two series in a row. Pretty dominating performance from Flipside. This is a lot on the line, as you just said. It has to be in the back of their Ooh, heads. Ooh, good try. For Mocket, knowing they just Again, you see the off-the-wall stuff has definitely improved a lot from this season one. On your mentality. We'll see if they can pull it back now, though. As we get into game number one, 30 seconds in now, neither team able to get any place. Good fake. Now. We'll see if this is actually Mocket now, figuring out what they had to do. So what these these events as well, um, this was when players started to really upgrade their tech. So a little anecdote. Ooh, again, infield passes from flip side. So a little anecdote for you. So Violent Panda used to play on 60 frames per second at home on a 60 hertz monitor. This event they had a 144 hertz monitors, uh, I think. And then for Violent Panda, it was the first time we played on it. Instantly went home and bought one to play with because he played so much better here than he did online. Um, he wasn't that big a superstar around the time. He was like an upcoming player. Like he was good, but like... Pashi and Devo were the superstars in this team. And Violent Panda really stepped up this, this event. Um, so yeah, like that was a massive factor for these guys. Is getting on land, getting better tech, and then going home and upgrading. Similar kind of thing happened with 240 Hz. You know, thinking of Alpha at DreamHat Leipzig. He used to play on a laptop and then went along to his first event. Um, and played on uh, 240 Hz. And it was like... These players learnt so much just from going to LAN and, and trying out different tech and seeing each other's tech and seeing what people use. Alright, this looks like it's a good goal based off of based off of the peak. Pinch in the favor of Mocket. A pass there to Panda. A good read. Devo is up. A shot on net. On the goal line. <laughs> oh, is it a crazy save? Okay, it was a crazy save. How did that save happen? It bounced between those two posts like eight times. Okay, that's totally not true, but it was like. <laughs> Thanks, Tola, like eight times. Uh, but yeah, like those kinds of saves at the time were crazy. Read. Devo is up. A shot on net. On the goal line. Oh, what a save. Like, the, the mechanics of this game genius the, whoever designed the ball to dissolve and then it's only once it's fully dissolved that it would explode it visually is so beautiful in moments like that to see just a little slither of the ball still out and the issue is, is when you do that it just leaves so many things open. oh, oh so marky duda hello off the ceiling into a double hello <laughs> no air roll no air roll until the final moment but yeah we love to see it we love to see it this was back when people would just play in, in a single straight line if it wasn't in a in a single line people didn't know how to deal with it 
Because they could only adjust up and down or left and right. They couldn't do both. They couldn't, like, work through the air diagonally that well. So it's 3-1 at this point. Flip side are just dominating at this point. And I think Mockett started to play worse and worse as it went on because they were struggling more and more. Just relentless pressure. It was a good final though. I remember it being, despite it being a, a stumping, it was a pretty good final. So I think the winning goal is coming soon. Bang. One goal can be the win right now for Flipside Tactics. We'll see. They Panda. They're on defense right now, almost. And from Good Panda, save. As they try to keep themselves alive here. Ooh. This is potentially going into oh, an Oh, Pashi. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that would have been such a good way to win it. If they if they got that goal then, that would have been so good. All right, let's get to the goal. Okay, sorry. Some spoilers in there. Oh, what a bounce. What a bounce. That iconic, iconic from Marky. So, so tuned in and just pops off. The obnoxious, the obnoxious smoke machines. We love that. Where's Johnny Boyington? Did Johnny Boy rush on stage? There's Mount. You see in the front row there? I think that's Mount. Yeah, there we go. Look, Johnny Boy found his way on the stage, didn't he? He was their manager at the time. Basically, he was making sure they turned up to things. It's like a little parent. But yeah, he went on stage with, um, with the team at that moment. With Smellsworth, I believe, as well. Little, they, they would not be allowed to do that these days. Because they they were they didn't give managers and coaches passes to get on stage and stuff like that, so they very much went against the rules. They didn't show the crowd much. They only showed the crowd from behind. They only showed the back of their heads. Okay. Mobile One High Performance Replay. Oh, here we go. Let's have a look. Right, time to spot the crowd. This is the fun bit. Okay, who do we recognise? Is that Jesse there? That looks like Jesse. Uh, is that Yummy Cheeseman? Yummy Cheeseman was there. This might be um, one of the OCE guys because that looks like Yummy Cheeseman right there. Hey, it's Quinn Lobdell. Look, it's Quinn Lobdell. <laughs> what a throwback. Yeah, that's Moot. Wait, I want to see if I can see myself. Because I know where I was sitting. Vaguely. I'm like in this row, I believe. I think that's all the Italian guys down there. All of Cook's friends. The whole wall. The you hear the chants, right? The empire has started. So, fun little fact. I was the first ever chant at this event. And I think the first ever chant in RLCS. I don't think they had, like, what we call chants now. They had the, like, IBP, IBP at season one. But I was the first, like, creative chant. That, like, sort of um, London season five vibe chants. And it was me and Doomsy. We just stood up, like legit. We just stood up, turned around, and just started chanting at the crowd to try and get them involved. And by the end of it, that we got them to do the Cooksier one. What an incredible play! What a They're like, hey, Jude this thing. Is it. <sighs> Flip side tactics. You hear it. You're world champions. This is absolutely incredible. You talk about these guys becoming the gatekeeper. You. I think this is Cole right here. Maybe. Have to go through them to win. Anyone spot me? But yeah, we did the Marky Duda chant. And it was like, we love you, Marky. We do da. We love you, Marky. We do da. We love you, Marky. Do da. Oh, Marky, we love you. So that was like the first History chant. There's Dig Diggy Dog. Hey, look, there I am. Look, it's me. It's me. And Wave Punk, my babe. And then this is Shogun here. Oh, what a throwback. Who's to my right? <laughs> Wait, that's Cole. That's Cole there. And look, Cole and Stumpy. Cole and Stumpy. Wave Funk. It's Pash, one of the early commentators of Rocket League. He now does like German stuff. Know, man. There we go. There's the trophy lift. The first of many tilted trophy lifts. You know, this is the problem. People pick it up and they have differences in the, the heights at which they pick it up. And then the short guy gets underneath and it starts to lean and then stuns her at that point. <laughs> and then here goes the bitrate. Goodbye, bitrate. Hey, look, Jay's are their sub. 
The only player to get 100% win rate in RLCS, I think. Maybe it's changed now, but for a long time that was his big stat because he played two league play games and won them both. Hey, look at Johnny Boy, he's getting involved. Kyle Mask in there. Hey, it's Jacob. What a throwback. Hey, look, there's a, a sad junior over here. I think Rizzo. We got everyone lining up to say congratulations. Hey, look, that was Rizzo. I saw Rizzo. Hey, turtle. Cool as a cucumber. Hey, there's Garrett. Rizzo's here. Gibbs's voice has not changed much at all because for the rest of us, we all got older. We got our sort of like rugged uh, voice coming through. But for Gibbs, he already had his his ultimate form at this stage. I think he was a dad at this stage as well. Little Giblet was here. So, you know, he, he's, he's been a dad the whole time. So he's got a dad voice. I think that's it. There we go. Da, 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 da. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and, and we'll watch season three in the next one.